How's it guys? Uh, Junaid here. Today's bait presentation video is going to be on a whole mullet targeting specifically dusky grey sharks. The smaller dusky grey sharks from looking around from 5 to 7 kilos. Uh, usually fishing off the beach. At uh, Usually at the end of August in KZN North Coast, uh, the grey sharks usually come in. So in the last two years or three years they've been a bit slow but we're hoping for a better run this year so in a weeks to come you might find the dusky gray sharks coming into our coast so this is the trace and bait that i use that i found most success with uh, obviously once you're targeting bigger gray sharks you you change the many different dynamics of the trace and bait but uh, in today's video we're targeting specifically targeting those those smaller grays and uh, this is the following uh, things that I'm going to show you today is going to help you get a bite faster. I'm going to run you through the trace and run you through the bait. Uh, I'm going to run you through the bait first. First, I found that uh, mullet works the best for grey sharks. So, a uh, smaller mullet uh, works very well. You have your scissors, you have your sharp knife, you have a mallet, and uh, the, cotton, the cotton that I'm using for, for tying this bait is a thick cotton, a latex cotton. I'm going to explain to you why. First, I'm going to run you through my trace and sh and show you why I use specific things for catching grey sharks like this. If you notice, this trace is a specific, it's a very long trace. Uh, the hook line for catching grey sharks uh, is, a, is a long trace because uh, the grey sharks are the surface feeders, surface to midwater feeders. So they usually bite on the, on the surface or when your bait is above the ground you get a bite faster so my trace line you're looking it's it's long it's uh, around probably 80 centimeters you can even go to a meter uh, you get a bite faster because if your sinker is on the floor and your bait is right up those are actually where the gray sharks are comfortable feeling uh, i'm gonna start you first off with uh, the, the, the the sinker we have us i usually have a six ounce sinker that i use that has a clip and i use a lighter lighter nylon on my sinker like a 0.5 or 0.6 or, and uh, I use a combination swivel as explained also in my previous video the combination uh, swivel gives your bait more movement so I tie the the sinker line onto the onto the bottom of the combination swivel and the, the swivel that's running moving around the combination swivel is where I tie my hook line uh, for my hook line I use a 0.77 nylon uh, you must have a, a strong nylon for grey sharks because they are they're strong. It's a simple, I tie a figure 8 to this and I, I, I usually use a, a very light uh, nylon. The nylon that I'm using here is a 60 pound nylon. I tie an Albright knot, I tie a 60 pound nylon and I snell a, a hook. The hook that I'm using is a 6-0 executioner hook. I uh, found that uh, with the size of this bait and uh, the size of the greys that we are targeting, this is sufficient. Uh, the nylon that I'm using and the, the wire that I'm using is a soft wire and usually gives more movement so more movement gives you a, a quicker bite for grey sharks in my trace I use two two glow beads these are glow beads are usually when they when they bang together in the water they create a sound they create movement and you get a bite faster so with regards to trace this is what i use and the dangle that i use is a very small dangle it's made up of number number 12 wire it's just simple i make a small loop uh, it depends how big my bait is so that depends on how big the dangle is going to be and very important people is this uh, this piece of of foam here this foam that i'm using here is called a noodle foam it's uh, it it's it keeps the bait right up so it's it keeps the bait right up so what i take a piece and i tie it on tight onto the dangle and uh, i use this as a dangle it, it it usually i put my hook through this and i attach my sinker to the bottom one i'm gonna get to that uh when we when we reach to our bait presentation here we have our mullet and here we have uh our our, our scissors so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut off the gill plates usually from the side I usually cut off the gill plates, leave it aside, take the gill plates and cut them off. I also take out uh, this these fins on the side, usually cut them off, usually cut them off. So I need to measure, I take my dangle, 
take my dangle and I measure it through so you're looking at the we're going to cut the, the mullet a little less than halfway so I take my knife and cut this mullet straight in half I then leave my head aside I take the back of my knife and I lightly scale the, the mullet I then take my, my knife and I open this I open the mullet open once it's open I take the backbone out backbone out and pull it and I have this piece of flesh I have this piece of flesh and I have my mullet head I leave it aside uh, another very important trick is when of this backbone backbone of any bait that we are using the backbone usually has a lot of scent so we take the light side of our hammer and we hit the, the backbone I'm going to explain to you how we use it just now thereafter we take our dangle usually this is a soft bait so I don't usually use a, a needle so we take our end of the this dangle and we push it through the push it through the mullet so it comes out on the other side push it straight through and here you have it you have your dangle through and you have your your loop of your of your dangle through this so people that uh, there's a hard part on a mullet's head is usually not very far it's just in front of the eye so we want to take our hook we take our hook and hook our hook our mullet through the dangle and it must hook on the other end of that hard part of the head so usually you take your you take your your hook from the bottom of the lip you go through your you go through your 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 dangle and you pierce the hook pierce the lip so here you have it this is the mullet head even if you if you have less mullet and fish are biting mullet you can use this bait put some choka over and it works itself but i'm going to show you what we are doing today so usually the cotton that i take is the thick cotton the thick cotton is hard so you can tie it very very tight you can tie it tight so the tighter you have it the the the, the more blood squeezes out so this is very good for, for for the larger fish thereafter you take the rest of your mullet the mullet flesh you make sure you you pin just the, the part in the tail once it's over you come and you tie it up as tight as possible tie it up as tight as possible tight as possible as tight as possible you see once it starts it's bleeding you know that you're gonna get a bite faster then you take your the hit part of your spine of the mullet and you just put it on the back of the bait to give it some stability and tie this on also usually uh, guys usually throw the head and the spine part away uh, it also is a very important part in the bait and here you have it is your is your bait for catching gray sharks it's oozing with scent you can catch a uh, lot of fish with this, uh, you attach your dangle to the sinker, it's a small bait, uh, you can attach it and you can throw as far as possible with this bait. Uh, people always be careful when, you, when you're handling grey sharks, uh, make sure you don't hold it by its tail and try to release all the grey sharks as soon as possible because uh, sharks can die once they are out of the water for too long.